This cookbook makes no sense. Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile. And today, something is on the rise. Ooh, are we baking a cake? Should I pop a blue pill? What? No, I'm talking about the evil dead. After the success of the 2013 reboot, the plan was for director Fede Alvarez to follow it up with a sequel, while Sam Raimi would direct Army of Darkness 2, that would eventually bring Ash and Mia together. Well, that went nowhere. Instead, we got a TV show that brought Ashley J. Williams back in all his senior glory. Bruce has aged like a fine glass of milk. Once the TV show was canceled after three seasons, Bruce Campbell retired the Ash character. So, where does Evil Dead go without its hero? Evil Dead Rise is the fifth installment, written and directed by Lee Cronin. It is produced by original director Sam Raimi, star Bruce Campbell, and longtime producer Rob Tappert. Tappert, who gets to tap his wife, Lucy Lawless. Upon seeing the trailer, I had some questions. Is this a sequel, a spin-off, or another reboot? Where and when does this take place? And why does the book look so different? Maybe it got a facelift. So let's see if the Evil Dead rise or fall. The film opens with that iconic evil POV shot flying through the woods. While re-watching the movies, I remembered how this shot was achieved, with two crew members running through the woods with a camera on a board, and how nowadays, it'd probably be a drone. It ends up being a drone. Even if the cabin setting is familiar, Rise wastes no time trying to be modern. After a couple brutal kills, we then witness probably the best title card in the entire series. The next day, we meet Beth, a newly pregnant band roadie who decides to pay an overdue visit to her older sister Ellie, who is raising three kids on her own in a cramped LA apartment. Check out what I got your dad. What's going on, El? Danny, go take my car and get pizza with your sisters. Yeah, he ran off, but their dad, really dodged this bullet. So no, the apartments aren't built over the cabin or something stupid like that. It's really built over something much worse. A bank. The sisters reunion is cut short by an earthquake that leads to the discovery of a mysterious book in the building's garage. I hate it when that happens. The other day, I was changing my furnace filter and found another Necronomicon. Where do these keep coming from? What is this, Danny? I found it. Come back to me when you find some nudie mags. After picking up some Henrietta's pizza, Danny investigates the hole, discovering the book and three records, which he unwisely plays. Bruce Campbell's voice can be heard on one of the records from 1923. Campbell warns the priest it's called the Book of the Dead for a reason. Director Lee Cronin considers this cameo to be a time-displaced Ash Williams. Giving rise to flesh-possessing demons, Beth fights for survival as she is faced with the most horrific version of motherhood imaginable. Another reason why I never read. According to Lee Cronin, this is the third book shown in the retrieval scene from Army of Darkness. Hold it. Nobody said anything about three books. So there's the OG book, the 2013 book, and now this third volume. I always thought the other books were decoys and Ash had to pick the real one, but now the Dark Ones wrote three books? 
I don't know how I feel about that yet. In the end, it's about one girl's quest to prove... She's not a fucking groupie! Instead of a group of five friends, we meet five family members. We get to spend a decent amount of time with them in the first act, and I cared for them a lot more than I did the remake's characters. The kids should have went next door to watch the Freddy movies. Ah, uh, yes. Lee Cronin is keeping the Wes Craven and Sam Raimi connection going. Sam put a Hills Have Eyes poster in Evil Dead. Craven put Evil Dead in A Nightmare on Elm Street. So Raimi put Freddy's glove in Evil Dead 2. Like the 2013 remake, Rise focuses on siblings trying to patch things up, and the biggest theme of the movie is that of motherhood. You know how to lie to kids. <laughs> if demons are real, but the Tooth Fairy isn't, who's been putting teeth under my pillow? The scariest part was the mom wasting $80 worth of eggs. Open up now. When the DoorDash guy doesn't like his tip. Lily Sullivan and Alyssa Sutherland knock it out of the cabin with their performances. Lily plays Beth as a screw-up and reluctant hero, which is similar to Ash. Sutherland, however, plays one of the most demented and manipulating deadites in the series. Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now. She became a fan of Slipknot? Then how do you know they don't exist? I only believe what I can see. Oh, you're about to see some shit. What the film lacks in lore, it makes up for in gore. While Lee Cronin tries to make this Evil Dead his own, he hasn't forgotten what fans love about the franchise. Evil Dead Rise still features the buckets of blood that we expect. And vomit that looks like man pudding. The movie also finds new inventive ways to inflict pain on our characters. The use of a cheese grater in the trailer instantly made it iconic. It already has its own t-shirt. You don't look so good, Mom. You could get her a makeover for Mother's Day. I don't know. Deadite Mommy is making something rise. <laughs> From the very beginning, even with a low budget, Sam Raimi delivered disgusting yet cartoony practical effects. While Fede Alvarez's reboot feels like mean-spirited gore porn, Rise injects a small amount of humor back into the films. According to Cronin, Evil Dead Rise uses about 1,717 gallons of fake blood that cost about $135 per gallon. So they spent almost a quarter of a million dollars on blood. Time for me to rob a blood bank. While the Deadites in the original movies and series wore white contact lenses, Cronin copied Alvarez's yellow-eyed Deadites. It's not as painful and allows the actors to see but, in my opinion, doesn't look as good. I have always loved the creative sound design of the Evil Dead movies. The munching sound during the eyeball scene is really the sound of Bruce Campbell furiously eating an apple. At least Bruce is going on a diet. The only time the gags didn't work for me was when the foreshadowing was heavy-handed, making the movie too predictable. No, Mom! I don't have your scissors! What's this giant wood chipper doing in our parking garage? Cat in the vent? Now you're speaking my language. Evil Dead Rise uses the same formula. Idiot finds the book, accidentally summons deadites, one by one they are taken, and bodily dismemberment ensues. It raises more questions than it answers, and doesn't really point the series in any direction now that Ash is retired. It's a side story that needed more of a purpose. Money! <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm coughing on an eyeball. 
When I first heard this film was set in a high-rise apartment building, I imagined deadites chasing our characters from level to level. But it doesn't take full advantage of that setting. It's still a contained story taking place mostly in their small apartment and the parking garage. Uh-oh, I hope the buggy garage door opens later! The overuse of homages to previous Evil Dead sequels and other horror movies made the film feel a little unoriginal. Remember, come get some? Come get some. Remember, I'll swallow your soul? I'll swallow your soul! Remember Dead by Dawn? Remember the boomstick and chainsaw? Remember Cheryl reading the cards? Jack of diamonds, jack of clubs! Remember the eyeball gag from Evil Dead 2? <coughs> Remember the shining elevator? Remember the conjuring? <coughs> Remember the thing? Remember Fargo? <laughs> Remember? So, is Evil Dead Rise a great time? Mostly, it's never the same when someone else plays with Sam Raimi's toys, but there's some humor, there's a lot of blood, and it's led by two great actresses. I'll always miss Ash, but it's time to open up the cellar door to the future. We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.